So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that this God's Son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, and yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? A man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees by this world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. And after he had said this, he went on to tell them, my friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. Lord, we pray this morning that you will give us out of your word what you have placed in it. Reveal it by your spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before you're seated, turn to somebody and tell them you got 12 hours. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And some of you got nervous. That, that's, that's, not a, that's not a death sentence. I'm not, I'm not prophesying anything this morning, but I, but I am establishing what the Lord put on my heart. At the beginning of this year, at the beginning of the month, the Lord gave us a, a series of messages called 12 in 2012. Today is the last day uh, of that message. And he established some things for our understanding with regard to the number 12. The number 12. Say 12. 12 is the number of, of spiritual and governmental authority as you find it in the Bible. I've talked about it much over the last few weeks. Not going to take a lot of time this morning. But we've understood over the last five Sundays, including today, that there are 12 springs. 12 springs for your uh, continual refreshment and your, your benefit and your blessing that every single month of this year that God will not fail you. Can I get an amen? amen. We also found out that there were 12 stones. We looked at that. And those are uh, remembrance stones. And we still have some available at the back today. You can pick one of those up. They're absolutely free. And they're just testimonies of what God has done in the past and also reminders and encouragements to let you know that God isn't through with you. Hallelujah. And he's still got miracles for you this year, every month. Somebody say amen. Also, we looked at 12 months. And uh, we got a lot of response from that message over a variety of sources. People were just really blessed with it. And we still have some, uh, some gift certificates available back there. If you still haven't picked up your gift certificate to the Holy Ghost Spa. And it's open all year. Amen. Every month. So you can pick that up after the service is over. And then last Sunday, of course, 12 basketfuls. And recognizing the fact that God will supply, if we sow into the kingdom, he'll supply every single month of this year and will not fail you. Somebody say hallelujah. Today I want to close this series of message with the uh, text that we read and with the subject of 12 hours. Say it again with me, 12 hours. Tell somebody you got 12 hours. What's happened here is that uh, as we read the friends of Jesus, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, have a crisis on their hands, and Lazarus is sick, about to die, and of course he does die. And Jesus goes and raises, his from, raises him from the dead. However, there's a problem. Say, there's a problem. In order for Jesus to go there, he's going to have to risk his life. He's going to have to pay, as it were, the price of danger, the price of crisis. And his disciples remonstrate with him when he talks about going to raise Lazarus and going back into the vicinity where the officials and the religious potentates and pundits are out there to destroy him. And they said in verse 8, But Rabbi, a short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you're going back there. And yet, you're going back there. And look at Jesus' response in verse 9. The ring. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Are there not 12 hours of daylight? What's interesting in typical Jewish fashion is that Jesus answers a question with a question. 
You're still going to go back there? And Jesus doesn't simply say, yes, I'm going back. He just simply asks a question, a rhetorical question that has an obvious answer. Are there not 12 hours of daylight? Now, what you need to understand this morning is that daylight denotes time from sunrise to sunset. Are there not 12 hours? Depending on the time of year, sometimes we have less, sometimes we have more. But it was a general term, it was a, a, a symbolic phrase for the understanding that when you got up in the morning, it was daylight. When the sun came up, it was daylight. When the sun went down, when it set, that whole period of time was called daylight. And so Jesus says, well, are there not 12 hours in a day? He gives us a metaphor, and the metaphor is based on the fact that travel was possible during the daylight and in contrast nearly impossible at night. See, you, they didn't have highway signs lit up. They didn't have street lights. They didn't have, uh, you know, all kinds of electrical contraptions that allow us to go up like we do at night. We can walk, we can travel, we can take buses, we can tra take public transportation, we can drive at night, you can even drive down a lonely highway and there might be some little markers on the road that light up when your headlights hit it. Uh, but back then in those days there was no light anywhere in any way, shape or form at night. So Jesus says if we're going to work we have to work by the light of day. Are there not 12 hours in a day? What he was really saying was this. You ask me if I'm willing to go back into the area of Judea. You ask me if I'm willing to go to Bethany. You ask me if I'm willing to risk my life to do what I need to do and must do. But I have a question for you. It's simple. It's obvious. Aren't there 12 hours in a day? Isn't there enough daylight to do the work that I've been called to do? Jesus is saying is this, so long as time remains for me to work, I will do what I've been sent to do. You see, he was absolutely assured that no matter what happened and no matter where he went and no matter what he faced in his mission, that no harm could befall him. No danger could take him out. There was nothing that could stop his mission. There was nothing that could cut him off quick. There was nothing that could circumvent the activity of the ministry that he'd been given to do. He said, I've come because I've been sent. And no man can take my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. The enemy can't take my life. Herod couldn't take my life. The devil can't take my life. Nothing and no one can take my life. The Pharisees and the Sadducees can't take it. The Romans in all their power can't take it. Judas can't even take it. Because when it goes, it'll be because I laid it down of my own accord. Because I'm God Almighty all by myself. And no man takes my life from me. I lay it down willingly. assured no harm would befall him. His life would end when the Father willed it. His enemies couldn't shorten it. Jesus said, you need to understand that I have a mission to perform. There's a reason why I was sent. The maxim of this world is not in power. To shorten my life. I didn't get my commission from a political organization. I didn't get my commission from the world system. I didn't get my sending from Rome or anywhere else, where else on the face of this earth. I got my mission from God Almighty. My mandate came from heaven above. For from the foundation of the world and before, I was the one who would be sent into the world to save the world. Jesus was simply saying with his question, are there not 12 hours in a day? He was saying this, the time for my ministry is limited. And I must do what I've been sent to do 
I must act while there's still time to do so. I've only got three years of activity down here, Jesus said. I've only got three short years to reveal myself. I've only got three short years to declare and to make manifest the kingdom of God. I've only got three short years to heal, to touch, to reveal, to reveal the power and the glory and the magnificence of the kingdom. I've only got three years to let everybody know that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. I am the Messiah. I am the one that everybody anticipated and looked for. I've only got three short years and so that's my 12 hours. That's my daylight and as long as it's day Jesus said in John 9 and 4 as long as it's day we must do the work of him who sent me night is coming when no one can work 12 hours connotes for us enough time for what must be done but no time for waste it's amazing to me how many hours we can spend doing absolutely nothing. I got no witnesses in here this morning. We can spend hours in front of that screen. Used to be a box, now it's a screen on most of our walls. And we can spend hours. Now, the, the 30 minutes you spend watching beginnings on Wednesday morning at 7.30, that's time well spent. But we can spend our time watching the most inane, ridiculous, nonsensical th I'm just going to say it. I don't know how anybody can watch that Housewives of, of wherever show. I don't understand. I'm sorry. I'm, I, okay. Forgive me if you watch it. That's just me. I'm just, that's just real talk. I'm sorry. If that's your favorite show, I'm sorry. I'll pray for you. But I, a, amen. But we can spend our time doing the most ridiculous things. We can spend our days doing things that have no import. We can spend our time doing things that have no eternal value whatsoever. It doesn't mean that you're supposed to be so spiritually minded that you're no earthly good. I'm not talking about that. I, there has to be a balance. But folks, let me tell you something. We probably need to take a good look at our time and examine it and evaluate what we're doing with it and find out how much am I doing for the kingdom? How much am I doing based on who I am? How much am I doing based on my prophetic DNA, my prophetic identity that leads to my prophetic destiny? How much, how much am I doing that causes me to walk in the, the, the call of God on my life? How much am I doing? Yesterday, Santino and I uh, went clothes shopping. He, we, we both like clothes. Y'all know that. And I just, you know me, I just, anytime I get an opportunity to, to witness, I will. I'll make, I'll make room. I'll kick a door open if one doesn't open for me. Hello, somebody. Now, I, was, I was trying something on, came out of the dressing room, and I, the two salesmen were talking, and they were talking with each other. One of them said he needed to go out and get a smoke, and he said, well, I've only got three minutes. He said, I don't think I'll be able to smoke it in three minutes. And I started laughing. He looked at me. See, you just slide that in. So you just, I just started laughing. I was standing. He said, oh. I said, no, man, I don't think you'll be able to get it done in three minutes either. I said, I never could back in the day. He goes, oh, you know what I'm talking about. I say, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Sure I do. I say, you know what, you probably just need to let it go altogether. How's that? I say, it's probably be a good time to quit. And he goes, yeah, man, it's tough, though. You know that's tough. You know that's hard. I say, I understand. It was, it was tough for me, hard for me. I say, I smoked a pack a day every day. I was addicted to cigarettes. I was more addicted to cigarettes than I was cocaine. And so I explained to him that he said, he asked me, he said, well, how did you quit? And I said, he said, did you go cold turkey? I said, no, you know what? I said, I, I did one a day every morning, not a pack, but one cigarette every day. That's what I did in the morning. And I'd have a cigarette with my coffee. I sat there, read my Bible, had a cigarette with my, it was after I got saved. <laughs> Don't make me lie. 
I'm not going to tell you this before. I was after I got saved. After I got saved, I still had an addiction. 